and Tropic has released the new Claude 4 models. They both have a new Sonnet 4.0 and also an Opus 4.0. In this video here, we're gonna take a look at the improvements, some of the new features and so on that they have launched together with Claude 4. So right now, let's just jump straight into a blog post that we have the, on the Autolytics website. We cover pretty much everything in the AI computer vision space and so on. So definitely check out the blog post if you're not familiar with it. Most of it we also cover on the YouTube channel here. So check out the videos and remember to subscribe. So Claude 4, this is pretty much the only model that I'm using now, both for doing research if I want to just ask it whatever question, but also use it for coding. They have released this new Claude code tools and the new Opus 4 model is very good for coding. So if you just take a look at it, we have a new model that has come out. So we're going to take a look at the history of the Claude model. So basically just what stage are we at now? What versions are available? And also basically just take a look at the improvements as well. Some of the applications and how you can try out the Anthropics Claude 4 features, especially the Claude code. This is pretty much the only thing that I'm using for coding right now. It can be used wherever because this is a command line tool. So if you just take a look at it, we can pretty much just spin up everything. They have the new Opus 4 model and also Claude Sonnet 4. The reason why they created a command line tool around these models is pretty much just because they internally can see how much these models are improving over time. So there's not really any reason to spend time on UI, creating a new ID and so on, but also just make a tool that any developer can use in whatever IDE that they prefer. So if you take, just take a look at the general large language models, we have covered that here on the channel as well, but it's basically just a machine learning architecture called the transform model that tries to generate tokens one by one. So it's an autoregressive model that just spits out words one by one. When we train it on a full scale internet data set, it pretty much just learns a representation or learns a model of all the data that has been fed into it. Then you can go in and do some reinforcement learning. You can go in and learn from human interactions, how humans are interacting with it and so on. Train it specifically for code. I found that the Claude models are significantly better for code, but that's also one of the main focus points that they have. So if you're coding a lot, make sure to try out this model here. You can test out all the different models, see which one is the best for you. So here's some use cases for large language models, data transformations, natural language interfaces, workflow automation, co-pilots and assistants, autonomous agents. So it can pretty much be used for everything. And this is the main model, if not the only model that I'm using now in my daily work. So this is the evolution of the Claude LLMs. This is going so fast in this space here. A new model might come out in two weeks, a month or so, but this is actually like the previous ones. So if you're familiar with coding and so on, the best model that came out was actually like the 3.5 Sonnet model. Pretty much everyone was switching to that when that came out for coding. Then they came out with the 3.7 Sonnet model and also they had the Gemini 2.5 from Google and people were switching a bit back and forth between those two. I still feel like some is using Claude or Google Gemini 2.5 Pro model, but I just find the new Claude models significantly better than the other, especially the Opus model. They have different tiers and so on that you can check out on the Claude website. Instead of just having APIs billing, especially if you want to use Claude code. So concepts like agentic AI, mo model context protocol. So these models are specifically made for agentic purposes, tool calling as well. So they are, they are very, very good and the best models by far for doing tool calls. And one of the reasons why that is the case is because Anthropic is also the creators behind MCP. So the model protocol context, context protocol, which is basically just a toolkit that you have. And then the model can have access to all those tools and it can take actions based on that. So if you just take a look at it, this is act like when you just spin up Claude code, I'm going to show you in just a second, but Claude does not only have like coding capabilities, it's also very good at analyzing images. So it has vision capabilities as well. Claude AI, the Anthropic API, you can use it and also Google, uh, GitHub Copilot. If you're using cursor and whatever, again, it's just an API. So all of these different tools will, are supporting the new Claude models here as well. 
you can test it out, try it out in daily workflow. I definitely recommend you do that because I completely switched to this model. This is the only model that I'm using for now and make sure to go in and read the blog post as well. If you just jump straight into the Anthropic website, you can see the only thing that you have to do to install Cloud Code is just run this npm install in your terminal. You need to have a pro subscription. You can even have a max to have a max subscription as well with $100, $200 per month, pretty much $100 and especially the $200 a month is just unlimited API calls for the new Opus model as well. If you run it on an API basis inside cursor or whatever, it's going to be very expensive, pretty quick. Definitely check out the pricing. Like if you're working with these AI models here, you can really optimize around the pricing and what you're paying for these models, especially if you use it on an API basis. So I just have one subscription now, Claude with the new models. and I'm only using Opus for coding pretty much. You can switch back and forth between them, but this is the only thing that you have to run. So let's open up a new terminal and just take a look at how we can run it. So npn install. I already have it here. Need sudo permissions. I already have it installed on my computer. Once it's done here, only thing that you have to do is just type in Claude. Doesn't matter if you use PyCharm, VS Code, Cursor, WinSurf, any IDE, even if you just have a terminal on your phone, you can spin up Claude Code because this is just a CLI tool. They're making it better, better over time. New updates are coming out regularly. But here again, let's set up Claude. There we go. So trust this folder. This is just in my main folder, but usually you will have to go inside a specific folder. So I have one here called YouTube, I have a bunch of different files in here. So now I can spin up Claude. There we go. And I would like to give it access to this folder. The first thing that is very good and then I do every time you get into a code base, Claude also mentions this in some of the keynotes, presentations they're doing. They're actually like speeding up just the onboarding process of new engineers in the Entropic engineering team. It only takes a few days now to actually like understand the full code bases, all the code that they're working with. Now it takes days instead of weeks previously. So the first thing here that I do when I go inside a repo, you can see all these different commands. So you can run the slash command. You can see all the commands will come up here. So the first thing you do is just call in it. It's going to create a Claude empty file with code based documentation. So it's going to go through all the files, create documentation for it, throw it into this Claude.md file. And a very important thing when you're working with Claude code is that this file here would act like be loaded into the context every time, every time you run the model. So it's really good to keep this file updated over time. If you implement new features, could be how you can run the program, how you can do installation of the program, different setups, commands, and all that. You can include that inside the Claude MD file. And then if you want to spin up new things, you can just reference that file and make sure that it follows the code structure, the, the coding like programming structure could be that you have some different rules and so on. You can put them in there as well. But let's just call this init here. It's going to take a few minutes depending on like how large your code base and all that is. But just imagine like an agent going through the whole code base now. You can also switch between different modes. So right now I just have it in standard mode, LLM mode. I can hit shift tab. It will then go into auto accept edits on, which is the agent mode to have. And another cool thing is the plan mode. So when it's in plan mode, I usually just start out in plan mode tell it what do I want to accomplish? What do I want to code? Now it will come up with a plan. I can go through the different steps that it wants to go through to implement the solution that I'm looking for. Then I can go in and make some small corrections, basically just iterate on the plan. Once I'm satisfied with that, I can just hit go and we'll start the implementation. I can tell it start with the implementing the first phase. It will do that. It can test it into the terminal directly as well before we continue with the next phase. You can always interrupt it, go back into history and all that as well. So it's a very powerful tool, but that's how I'm working with it. So plan mode first, iterate on the process and the problem that we're trying to solve. Then we solve it step by step. We make sure we test each phase as well, and then we'll end up with a pretty good code structure at the end. So now we will pretty much just analyze it. I'll just go into the standard mode. So tell me about the code base. We can just wait here a second. Usually takes a few minutes for to run everything through. While it's doing that, we can also just take a look at some other commands. 
so slash model you can change the model as well so you can set it to recommend it where it's using opus until you hit 50 percent of the limit then it's going to switch to sonnet you can choose the specific model that you want to use if you just want to go with sonnet directly or whatever depending on the plan that you're running on so tell me about the code base and i'll just queue this i hit enter and then it's going to run it after it has created the claude md file so now we can see at the end here it asked me if i want to create this claude md file i'm just going to accept that let's open a new terminal here while it's doing it so we cd into my youtube directory again there we go i'm going to open it up with cursor cursor dot and now we should be able to see we have this claude md file uh, so let's see there we go i have the claude md file and then usually inside my cursor or my code editor i'm just running claude code in the terminal so you can add whatever amount of terminals that you want with claude so here i can just spin up a new there we go and it will then run it in here so claude we have an overview we have development comments there's no one here installing dependencies common task we have some calibration video frame extraction webcam undistortion gaze detection yolo based video processing and all that it goes through the different core components with vision processing scripts optic detection data flow we have all these different things here covered directly in the cloud md file and it's going to load that into memory or into um, the context every time so now we can tell tell us tell me about the code base hit it in it's going to generate it based on the cloud md file and the research that it has done we'll get the results back and this is how you can learn a new code base significantly faster and then you can use it to implement new features in the exact same style especially if you're multiple people working in the same directory or project calibration data file outputs extracted frames we have some api dependent we have some camera calibration optic detection with yolo specialized tools and all that so it basically just goes through the individual scripts that i have here and explains what it is you can always do follow-ups tell us to do more detailed explanation of a specific file could be a section of a file and all that as well this is very important make sure that you use it in your daily work hope you learned on this video here definitely go in and check out the cloud code and new cloud 4 models hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos until then happy coding